Athletic podcast is back in action and we have Champions League back in action this week. And we had a dramatic Friday draw in Kiev, year 2012. Four groups are on the table now and guys, we have a fantastic group of death coming up. Varun Mature is here. Hello, Dan. Italian expert, among ma- ma- many things. Uh, Dominic Points, Wimbledon expert and plenty of football knowledge. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> in your uh, area. And Oliver Dew, Hi, Dan. who highlights everything around Arsenal, football, cricket, etc. <laughs> but we will not talk about cricket today. No, no. We leave that because the year 2012 draw is really intriguing, interesting. We have all the odds up at Betlick. Spain and Germany is favourite. Holland, England outsiders here. And interesting from the draw, nothing happened with the odds on uh, Spain and Germany. But Russia, they dropped. They were in a quite easy group, so we lowered them from 28 to 20 times the money. Now, uh, Dominic, from an English point of view, you face France, you face Sweden again, and cause Ukraine. Are you sharing? Um, I'm happy that out of Pote of the top seed, where there were two hosts, and then you could have got Germ- um sorry, it was Netherlands or, or Spain, wasn't it? The, the fact that we got Ukraine, got to be happy with that. Um, we'd have liked to avoid with France, but um, overall, reasonably happy with the draw. We beat Sweden recently, but uh, we lost to France quite comprehensively in a friendly last year, although that was quite a young team with Henderson and Carroll, I think, both making their debuts yeah, in that right. game. But I definitely have France as favourites to win the group personally. I think, uh, mm. quite frankly, especially with Rooney out, uh, doubts over Wilshire's fitness still. I mean, hopefully he'll be back. I, I, I think France should be favourite to that group, personally. Yeah, England is a uh, slim favourite there, so France is... Yeah, I mean, England at 2.5, France 2.8, yeah. Ukraine 5.0, and Sweden 6.5. I mean, I, I think uh, France and Sweden are probably both overpriced there, to be honest. Mm. The thing is an interesting match-up, because I think they're very similar teams in, in their sort of process where they're going to now because you know France have struggled in all the last major tournaments but mm. sort of Laurent Blanc's uh, cleared the the slate mm. and started again and in some ways Capello has he's not cleared the slate but he's started to blood a few youngsters and I think they're both developing nations mm. so it'll be an interesting uh, tie in, in the first group game there definitely for sure, and the two top teams in this group will face the Group C two top teams. Probably Spain and Italy, if not Croatia or Ireland, uh, can do something. In Group B then, as we said, the Group of Death. Germany, Holland, Portugal, Denmark, Varun. <laughs> How did you react when you saw this group? Oh well, I mean, uh, after what happened with Group A, this one became apparent that there's going to be one major group with all the big players, and it mm. happened to be Group B. Mm. Netherlands are no newcomers to the Group of Death. They had a very similar group last in the last Euros when they were tied up with Spain and France. Mm. Oh, sorry, Italy and France. Mm. They made it through that group, and guess who they faced in the next round? Russia, <laughs> who they went out to. Yeah. So it is a very likely scenario here again, because yeah. the winners of Group A play against the second-place Group B side. Mm. Now, of course, you make it through this group, and you're going to have, as someone said, you know, a lifeline in the quarterfinals against some mm. of the perceived weaker teams. Yeah. But it's not going to be that easy. No. Though Portugal, in my opinion, are probably a damn squid once more, because... Mm. Uh, well, they didn't make it through their qualifying group in first place. They have to go through the playoffs. They, in fact, lost to Denmark on the last day when they needed a win. Mm. So I guess Netherlands and Germany have to be seen as the favourites to progress in Group B. Mm. I agree with that. Uh, let's see then what happens in Group A, where we have Russia, Poland, Czech Republic and Greece. And I guess the Poles were really cheering it because they feel that they have a chance now to do something as hosts. It's a fantastic sport because, it it, it, you know, in... in in many tournaments, you, you do need the host nation yeah. to try. To it. Yeah, because yeah. It, the support's fantastic. Yeah. And I was in uh, Austria and Switzerland during the last year, 2008, and it, you could really feel there that it was nothing going on. I was in Vienna, and you thought it was a funeral almost. <laughs> the team did so yeah. badly. <laughs> you know, so you need the home side to prevail, and they have a big chance. Even if I think that 
a lot will happen. And I think Dominic, you have something uh, to I, say here. I just think the Greeks at uh, 5.5 to win the group mm. or at 2.4 to qualify, I think that could be a bit of value. The Greeks, I think they were, after the World Cup, they were the last European t- team to be beaten mm. following on from the last World Cup. Mm. Um, I they look well organised. They beat Croatia to top spot in qualifying, and I think they're overpriced at that. Yeah. Given that the Czechs are clearly a team in transition, um, the Poles, there's doubts about them. I mean, they've only been playing friendly for the last two years. They've had a couple of good results in those, but mm. they don't look great. And I mean, Russia obviously worthy favourites of that group. But I mean, they're, they're, one interesting point about Russia is they'll be coming off a 44 game season or something because they're uh, moving their season from. Um, uh, summer to a winter to season to help their teams in the Champions League. So, given that a lot of their players play in Russia, that could be uh, that, that could hinder them. Yeah. So, I think the Greeks at five point five definitely worth the bet. Yeah. You can see how tight this is when you look at odds. It's the most narrow odds uh, grouping we have: Russia two twenty, Poland four times the money, Czech Republic four fifty, and Greece five fifty. So, if you get it right here, you can do some good money. Anything can happen there, but Russia is. The favorite, and we, as we said, then slashed the odds a bit there from 28 to 20 times the money to win the tournament after the draw. Mm. But then they would face a very tough uh, quarterfinal from Group B, the group of the. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. And we have uh, some really good insights now coming up from our odds experts. I just want to make a, okay. a quick point before we go mm. there about Ireland. Yeah. You know, I think it's a tough draw for them. But quietly, I think they'll be fancying their chances of maybe an upset, maybe a little second place. Yeah, um, I know that you know when I said QPR to beat Stoke away, but Stoke <laughs> didn't win. QPR won, <laughs> and I know that might, some people might laugh now. But Greece will probably not win the tournament. They did it though, two thousand four, and I think Ireland can be up to something. It could be a, one of those outside bets that could be yeah. interesting to have. I mean, I don't think they will go all the way, but I think the odds is quite nice. Like to qualify. I think they have, we have them now on, on, on the outright they're 80, yeah. and uh, just to qualify from the group, they're 4.5. Yeah. I would definitely place a bet. Yeah, because I mean, they've been helped in the fact that their first game is against Croatia. Yeah. So they can, if you can get a win there, they can do it. Sure it's it's be, yeah, exactly. I believe Trapattoni is unbeaten away from home in competitive games, whilst yeah. Ireland manager. I mean, he'll set his team up not to lose, and anything yeah. else will be a bonus. And you yeah. could probably see, you never know, with a little bit of luck, three draws could get you through. I mean, if Spain were to, to win all their games, then yeah. three draws, or, or sorry, Spain were to win the other two games, obviously, because yeah. there would be one draw there. Yeah. But if, if Spain were to get seven points and drop points against Ireland, yeah. you could see three draws being enough, maybe. Yeah. Or even if they beat Croatia. Then yeah, I mean, I know Trapattoni said he didn't want to draw Italy, but I think the in time. the back of his mind, he'll be quite happy and... He'll be trying to prove a point because he didn't do too well as coach at one of the major tournaments with Italy. It was in the 2002 World Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. When mm. Trapattoni was coaching, uh, it became an absolute Italian scandal the way they went out against Korea back yeah. then. Uh, of course, he'll be with dramatic the fashion yeah, though, from the referee. Dramatic fashion <laughs> and Francesco Totti at the centre yeah. of controversy yeah. once more. And with Ireland, as you guys have pointed out very correctly, they're going to be a good bet. Uh, just. Keep an eye out on them because they beat Italy in Italy, which mm. was the first competitive defeat under Prandelli. Mm. It was obviously a friendly, so those don't count for much, and Italy dominated the game. Mm. But you know, with Prapatoni, he can get a result well under pressure, and he's got the team set up very well. The Irish team, they don't concede too many goals. They are a very good defensive unit, mm-hmm. and going forward, they can nick a goal or two when they need it. They've yeah. got some excellent poachers. So, yeah. but also I think a factor for Ireland is that they have some players who make their last big show now, yeah. like Keane, like Duff, and uh, yeah. Shea Given, and they have a big chance they know exactly. that to do something, yeah. and they will fight for their life here. And uh, Travis Tony will want to prove a point at a major tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. exactly. Um, yeah. And possible quarter final against England. Yeah, it would be something. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Let's not get ahead of us. No, exactly. <laughs> but still, our guys in Gibraltar is waiting. We have two football experts, football odds compilers uh, with us. It's David Torrance and Craig Baden. Welcome to the show, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Dan. Good to be here. Hi, Dan. Nice. Uh, the draw. Uh, what's your reflections around that, Craig and David? Any specific ones? Uh, I mean, we have a group of death for sure. Any other uh, thoughts and comments around the draw overall from your end? Uh, 
I'd like to start with the group of dads. Um, mm. Holland, Denmark, Germany, Portugal. Yeah. It's interesting that the prices didn't really move on the outright. You'd, you'd expect it was such a tough draw that maybe Germany would have drifted in the market. Mm. But it wasn't so much of a drift because the reward of progressing from the group of dads is, of course, a, a quarterfinal of life mm. against one of the teams from Group A, Poland, Greece, Russia, Czech Republic, which is clearly on paper the weakest group. Mm. So you get through the group of death, you have a quarter final of life. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Then they have quite a straight path, you would expect, to the semi final. Uh, Germany and Holland, they should make this, or do you think Portugal or even Denmark could threaten them? Well, in qualifying, Denmark were very strong. They actually um, actually progressed ahead of Portugal mm. in the they won they won the last uh, the last game of the group in Portugal at home. Mm. I mean, um, Nick Nick Aspender scored, so they're, they're they're no mugs. They will they will give it their best shot. And Portugal, I mean, they have the best player in the tournament guaranteed, and mm. potentially the world uh, on their books. So you never know. I mean, four fifty no. Portugal to beat Germany that could be a interesting match to start the tournament. Exactly. Very interesting. We have uh, Paul and Greece kicking, all, uh, kicking off the whole tournament on the 8th of June, followed by Russia, Czech Republic from the, at least on paper, quite weak uh, Group uh, A. And then in Group C, followed by the, after the Group B, Group of Death, we have Spain, Italy, challenged by Ireland and Croatia. Also here we have some quite interesting thoughts from your end on Italy, I would, I would guess. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um... I mean, looking at the group, it, it seems pretty much a two-run race, really. Spain and Italy should, should quite easily qualify here. Um, so, yeah, it's very much them too. And considering the quarter-final run is against France, England, Ukraine or Sweden, mm. I mean, you've got to fancy either of those teams to get through that. But Italy at the moment, very strong, got through qualification, very young team as well, and, and they're playing really well. Mm. With Super Mario, you know, anything can happen. Um, we've had the big prices get all the way. Mm. So it's 15 times the money on Italy. You will probably place a bet on that, Craig? Yeah, definitely. I think out of, out of all the runners in there, they're, they're the outsiders that could definitely make it all the way. Mm. I think uh, David here has a nice little Italy stat that he likes to, to brag about. And, and <laughs> on his yeah, hi, hi again, Dan. It's Dave here. Hi. The, um, Italy, for me, is... Um, It is, it is, it's huge value, I think. The guys, on the fact they conceded two goals in qualification in what was a tough group. They had the likes of Serbia, Slovenia, mm. uh, Estonia. It was a tough group, and they, they got through conceding two goals. It's a new Italy, it's a different Italy. Not the same team you saw two years ago, not the same team you saw four years ago. Mm. Maybe the same similar side type of team you saw six years ago and the way they play. And it's interesting stat, every six years, it seems this they get, they get there. Mm. 2012, we think they might be winners. Yeah. 2006, they won the World Cup. Mm. 2000, they got to the final of the Euros. Mm. 1994, they got to the final of the World Cup. So, the, the, so every, every six years, the Italians will be there. The trend is clear. <laughs> uh, go in and bet on Italy, 15 times the money. Otherwise, of course, we have favourite thoughts on uh, Spain, Germany, followed by Holland and England. Uh, looking at the favourites uh, in advance here, which team do you rank? Highest here, Craig and David. Which team will win? I believe me and, me and Craig share the exact same opinion on this. We think we think Germany will win the tournament. Mm. We think Germany are just they're so strong, they're improving all the time. They, they they're always they're always knocking on the door of the major tournament finals. And I think for 25, they they're probably the more realistic bet. I'd say Italy's are that's our value bet. Mm. They're, they're the value selection, but mm. 425. If, If you gave me 20 20 pounds or 20 euros, I'd put it on Germany at mm. 425. Yeah, interesting. How about England then? Uh, quite a lot of hopes and some pressure as always around England ahead of a major tournament. What's the key, do you think, for Capello and his men to succeed in Poland and Ukraine this next summer? Um, there's always pressure around England and Even though people have said that they've got an easy group, I don't think they have. Um, potential Rooney is going to be out for all three group matches. Big miss. Mm. France, they're, they're a definitely improving team. Um, Blanc hasn't playing well. They're not conceding many goals. And they, when have England ever beat France, really, in a, in a major tournament? It's a, it will be a tough game. Ukraine, home advantage. 
they're definitely going to be playing well. And we saw not long ago that Sweden can beat England. I know it's only friendly, but they can do it. And we do seem to struggle against the Swedes in, in the big tournaments as well. So England have not got an easy group to get through. No. And then they'll have a quarter-final probably against Spain or Italy. Mm. It's, it's not easy. It's a tough one for sure. Uh, we already have the matchups up also, of course, from the first round here. Have you found find already any interesting bet to do already now from the first round? The eight matches that we have here coming up from the eighth of you. Any odds yeah. that sticks out? Yeah, going back to um, going back to Group C again, the mm -hmm. um, Sp Spanish Italian group. We think that Spain is obviously the marquee fixture of the whole um, the whole group, mm -hmm. and the fact they play first. It's going to be a very, very cagey affair. I mean, will the uh, will the fear of losing outweigh the will to win? Mm. So perhaps it'll be, be a low scoring affair. Could be could be a draw. I think three forty. Yeah. Three could represent significant value on the draw because I can't see each team. What each, I think the teams be scared of losing. Basically, I don't think each team will go out there, mm. particularly wanting to win because maybe you know. You, they, they draw, they go on to the next games, they can get a couple of good results and go through. They know they can beat Croatia, they know they can beat Ireland. Yeah. So, very crazy affair the first one, three quarters of the draw. Exactly. We might see some draws in the first round, hey? That's a popular result in the first game. Not to lose is most important. This week we have the last round of Champions League group phase football and uh, David and Craig, we have some interesting movements in the matchups there, especially around uh, the classical teams, Barcelona, Real Madrid. What can you tell us about that? Interesting from a betting perspective. Yeah, very interesting. Um, the big point is both teams have already won their groups. They've coasted through the group stage. No matter what happens, they're going to come first. So. Obviously, Saturday night is El Clasico, the first one of the season. There's probably never been a bigger one. Mm. Never been a bigger match than Barcelona Real Madrid mm. in the league. And I think their focus this week is solely aimed at Saturday night in El Clasico. They could, I, from, what, from what I know, I don't think they could care whether they won, lost, or draw on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And you'll see very different teams to what, what you'll see Saturday night. You'll see a lot of reserves. I see Pep Guardiola has already said he's going to play all his reserves mm. against that. Uh, against Barté, yeah. and um, I imagine Mr Mourinho will do the same. So you'll see very unrecognisable teams from before. Mm. And the odds have changed here quite a lot, haven't they? We have uh, lower odds. Yeah, we had to, we had to, we had to cut Madrid, uh, sorry, Madrid out yesterday, cut the draw and cut Ajax, because Ajax require one point to qualify, mm -hmm. and one point will suit them, so if they, maybe the draw at 3-10, yeah. It represents a bit of value. Yeah. Madrid are on the side. We pushed them from 225 to 240. Yeah. And I think the price is only going one way. Yeah. And but the boys always cut down from 20 to 13 times the money now. Barcelona is up on 120 to win at home. So that's interesting. Uh, intriguing El Clasico coming up for sure. The duel between Messi and Ronaldo. Uh, we are doing an infographic there actually. A very nice one that we will ship out. Uh, around the game with uh, stats and odds on Messi and Ronaldo. So that's the big one coming up. But before that, of course, Champions League. And it can be some massive matches here. Guys at Stanford Bridge, Chelsea versus Valencia. Chelsea won now in the league, but with some luck, you must say, against Newcastle. It wasn't a 3-0 game, to be honest. Uh, do you think they will make it, uh, David and Craig, against Valencia now at home? Um, I think it's going to be a very tough match. Um, as you said, the, they did win at the weekend, but it was a, a very fortuitous match for them. Mm. Um, Valencia as well, they're, they're pretty much flying. Soldado, he, he can't stop scoring, can he? <laughs> um, it's going to be a very, very difficult match. And I mean, we're, we're currently 172 on Chelsea, which could, could potentially maybe be a bit short. I know they're at home, but they're, they're not playing the best against these big teams. Um, it's going to be a close call. It'll be a great match to watch. Mm. 175 on Chelsea currently and 450 on Valencia. Could be some value there if you fancy Valencia to do something at Stamford Bridge. Then of course we have Man United. A crucial game away at Basel. They need a point to go through. Will they make it? Manchester United, of course they'll make it. <laughs> if he needs a point, he'll get a point. It's yeah. as simple as that. I can't see... <laughs> This, and all these top guns will be out and they'll, they'll get the point that's required. But I think 
So I, I think maybe the draw could be the value in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, three three fifty. We're currently offering the draw. I yeah. think that could be the value uh, if they if they say, say they're one nil up going into the last twenty five minutes. They can see the goal. They'll just defend for the rest of the game. Manchester United, as I know and hate them, will will go get the result. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other interesting bets over Tuesday and Wednesday, guys, to make? Maybe, maybe potentially, potentially there was one. Mm -hmm. We, uh, yeah, potentially there was one bet. I, mean, I like the look of uh, possibly. You don't ever see Milan such a big price. Uh, they're two thirty at the moment. Yeah. You don't see them such a big price against what what are Milan's in terms of uh, European competition, Victoria mm. Pilsen. Mm. Milan, they come second, they can't come first, they can't come third, so perhaps they're focusing on it, but I think I just, I just can't remember the last time I saw Milan this big a price against such a such a small team. Mm. So could, perhaps two thirds you could represent represent a bet. Could be something. Do you think that Manchester City can get their miracle and Napoli dropping a point in Villarreal? Well, this is what I was just about to say. I think Bayern Munich actually quite represent a bit of value. Mm. Um, I know they have nothing to play for at the top of the group, but they're a German team. German teams never come to lose. They always come to win a match, no matter what. So as much as Man City need to win, it's going to be a very tough match for them. And to be honest, I can't see Napoli dropping points in Villarreal. Mm -hmm. I think they are going to win. I think we could end up seeing City in the Europa League for the rest of the season. Yeah. 175 on Napoli, five times the money on Bayern Munich maybe to scrap through. And who knows, if Napoli goes 2-0 up early, Manchester City will probably know that. So that can affect their motivation also, in a, in a, in a, in a way. Dominic, do you have a point here maybe? Yeah, I'd just like to say one of the most interesting fixtures of the week, I think, is Borussia Dortmund at home to Marseille. Marseille won 3-0 in the reverse victory, fixture earlier in the competition. They're at 5-25. Given that uh, Arsenal will probably be taking a young team to Olympiacos, uh, both Borussia Dortmund and Marseille will be going all out to win this game. I can see a lot of goals, and I think Marseille a great value at 5.25. I think uh, all, all through the game, one team or the other will be desperate to win, and therefore there will be lots of goals. Mm. Maybe an overbet there as well. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so far, David and Craig, what, what have you analysed uh, among the top sides in Champions League so far? Have you seen a favourite emerging that will lift the title in Munich in May, the trophy? Yeah, well, since, since the start, Barcelona has paid pretty much the same price. But Madrid, Madrid is the team that everyone's had to, we've had to cut them, the whole industry's had to cut them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be the team to beat in Munich, finalists in uh, 2010. Mm. They're now they're now short as eight to, to win the whole tournament. They're third favourites, which at this stage of the competition is is pretty crazy. Because over the last few years, you've always had Manchester United, Chelsea, Milan, Inter Milan. They've always been up there. But this year, we've got well, the German team looks so strong. Their nickname's FC Hollywood. The finals in Munich. Mm. It could be a Hollywood ending. Yeah, it's a great incentive for them to have the <laughs> to have the final at home. Interesting stuff, guys. Uh, it will be intriguing on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we have the Chelsea Cup course as well. So we're looking forward to plenty of good odds from your side. David Torrance, Craig Baden, it was a pleasure having you on the call. Thanks a lot. You're a gentleman, thank you. No problem, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Okay, interesting thoughts there from David and Craig in Gibraltar, our top football bookies. Uh, Champions League was on the table and also Euro 2012, of course. And just getting back there, Varun, to Italy, interesting. They feel that Italy could do something here. Yes, next indeed. Summer. I mean, when you look at the outright the price on Italy and mm. they're in Group C, they will already have played Spain. And that's always an advantage, isn't it? When yeah. you play the best team in the tournament beforehand, you know what you're ready for. Mm. And for the outright price, which Italy have... They've been developing a squad. They beat Spain about uh, six months ago in a friendly. So the team's up and coming, and you've got Super Mario Balotelli. Who yeah. else do you need? <laughs> Why me? Yeah. So, yeah. so you think that, I mean, you're an Italian expert. You think that they can be up there and uh, challenge for they the do, They do have a few injury concerns. Yeah. They have the fitness of Giuseppe Rossi to look at, uh, and he's only expected to be back in action for Villarreal by April, which mm -hmm. gives him about two months to prepare. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the case of Antonio Cassano, who had mm -hmm. his medical problems, and he doesn't even have a time frame for when he will be back. He's no. expected to be back soon, maybe by March. So 
these are two key players which Prandelli has normally relied on his system for. Yeah. Cassano and Rossi, they've always predominantly featured. So if these two are taken out of the Italian team, there are going to be a few adjustments which they're going to need to make. Mm. Now, they've got the talent to do that. Mm. And they've got a young team, unlike the one which we saw at the 2010 World Cup. This mm. is a very young team. They want to achieve. They're mm. led by... Mm. front line by Balotelli they've got new midfielders you've seen them at Juventus Claudio Marchisio who's mm. having an absolute cracking season right now mm. and you can almost feel the youth energy flowing yeah. through the team so for an outside bet put your money down on Italy right now <laughs> interesting 15 times the money and as Varun said go for it now because the odds might change the bets are coming already on the year 2012 we have Champions League as well. Just a quick but you one. have another one. And any chance of <laughs> Di Natale making the squad? Di Natale, no, he wouldn't be making the squad at all because Prandelli has. I mean, he's been the top scorer in Serie A for the longest time. Mm. But Prandelli is absolutely certain he doesn't like to call in players who are no. beyond the thirty-two. No. I mean, there's been some mark. talk about it, but I just. But no, to... it's not going to happen. Prandelli is absolutely certain about it, so it's yeah. going to be Balotelli, Rossi, and probably Giampaolo Pazzini. If oh, yeah. interesting, striking like there. Anything can happen. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Which is intriguing. Balotelli and his teammates, much as they see, they hope that anything can happen in Champions League this week when they face Bayern, a win there, and. Napoli not to win and Manchester City is through to the knockout phase. It's very unlikely though. Dominic, what do you say? What can City hope for? Can they hope for a Napoli not to win away at Villarreal? I think, um, I mean, well, obviously that's what they're hoping for. I think the odds look roughly correct. You've got to say Napoli at 1.75, odds on to qualify. And I, I think... To be honest, I think Napoli deserve to. Mm. I think they've played really, really well in in the two games against Man City. They deserve yeah. to be in pole position. And uh, with Cavani and Hamsek, I'd like to see those players uh, yeah. carry on. Because, let's be honest, I doubt Napoli will be able to keep those players together much longer. So that team, mm. this is probably their last season together. Yeah. And it'd be nice to see how they can do. I mean... There's a fair chance that a few of them might end up together at Man City next season, and they can give it another go. <laughs> we but see. Um, we see. Yeah, but it's intriguing, and uh, probably only the nerves can stop them there. Uh, even though it's would be quite strange if we had classy side like Villarreal would go through a whole group stage without taking a single point. But Napoli's favourite here, of course, one seventy five, three sixty is the draw. While City pays one sixty five at home to Bayern Munich, who pays five times the money. That's interesting. Uh, we also have another Manchester side under pressure uh, in a different format, a bit nicer format, because they need a point away at Basel and then they are through. Yeah. And that should happen, shouldn't it? But yeah, it should. I mean, uh, United, the defence has been absolutely miserly since the 6-1 thrashing. Though in Europe, you must point, must be pointed out that they are a very different side and they kind of keep themselves open to a few attacks here and there, which is what happened against Benfica for the draw which we tipped and which actually came in. So here, though, uh, United just need a draw. I see them going through. Mm. Basel do like to score. So I'm going actually for three or more goals in this game. Yeah. I think it's not going to be a very cagey affair. Uh, no. Basel know that they need a win, so they'll mm. be coming at United. Uh, given their slight defensive problems in Europe, mm. uh, we might have a case where you know, United score a couple and then Basel get one back. Mm. So three or more goals, which is about 1.65 to 1.7, looks like a fair bet That's on good. that game. That's good. It probably will be a quite lively encounter, yeah. you would guess. We plan to go. So that's a good one, Varun, for sure. I think maybe I disagree. Mm-hmm. I think knowing that maybe Benfica will get the win, they need to secure top spot. I think Ferguson might just think squeeze out the yeah, goal, get the point they need, and move yeah. on. Okay. You know, I think all the big guns will be back. So mm. maybe I'm wrong. I'm, you know, I think I think they'll get through, and I think they'll mm. get the point they need. But mm. as Varun said, the defense has been amazing, and since the six-one, you know, they're batting mm. down the hatches. No one's coming in. Mm. Now, United they might not be scoring that many goals, but they're certainly not conceding. So, but I think maybe more of the same for yeah. United. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one interesting bet is probably Apoel as well against Shakhtar at home. Uh, Apoel at uh, even money there uh, to win at home against Shakhtar, who is out of the competition, out of Euro- Europa League as well. Definitely, yeah. Shakhtar have nothing to play for. No. They can't even get third. And no. Apoel, Apoel actually just over even at 2.05. Mm. Um, they won, they've drawn all their away games they've won their two home games mm. and yeah I definitely think you're right there yeah. Dan it's a bit of our favourite team now if you're a yeah, neutral 
yeah. <laughs> they're from Cyprus and so they're firing on all sides I mean it's amazing uh, that they can talk this group I don't know what we're going to do in the, in, while the Champions League has a break and we can't talk about that <laughs> <Apple. laughs> exactly <laughs> what shall we do <laughs> exactly meanwhile in that group Porto can clinch it come back here they beat Shakhtar away in the last round now they have seen it at home and a win will take them through Hulk and his team it's 175 on Porto but mostly interesting probably I would say it's around Chelsea playing at home to Valencia and oh they probably need a win or a nil nil. Nah, I think they they will need to win because yeah. I don't see them clean, keeping a clean sheet no. because Valencia have scored in almost every single game they've played this season. Yeah. Just two times when they failed to score, one was against Sevilla and one was against Genk on the first match day. Mm. So I see Valencia absolutely getting a goal, and Chelsea haven't really been keeping too many clean sheets against the big teams. So for that to happen against Valencia mm. Mm, sounds a bit difficult, and they're in top form. The Spanish yeah. team, yeah, they are absolutely in and, top form. And even if Chelsea won, they were a bit lucky yeah. against Newcastle. It's four seventy five on Valencia here, one seventy two on Chelsea. The draw is three fifty. Yeah. So who knows? <laughs> Interesting. I mean, as the guys mentioned as well, Craig and David, that Saldado is in absolutely amazing form yeah. at the moment. Yeah, he's scoring, scoring goals for fun. So I mean, mm. Terry and whoever plays next to him are going to have to be on. Mm. They got there definitely. I also think in the uh, other game in that group, there could be a little bit of value on uh, Genk. Maybe just the draw or uh, the double chance. I mean, the draw in that game is three point seven five. Yeah. Leverkusen look very short at one point five five. Given the fact that Genk have drawn their two home games so far. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of money for smaller clubs. The points. I, I know. Yeah, you know so. I know Genk supposedly have nothing to play for, but you could you could argue there's been an overreaction to that in the pricing of uh, Leverkusen at one point five five because yeah. I, I think uh, Genk will still still be giving it their all. That that it's their last game in Europe this season, and I think they could nick something there. Yeah. So what's our bets, guys? If we start with Varun, if you pick one or two matches <laughs> that you will go for this um, Champions League round. Do you have something, or do you want to think? Oh well, I, I have a few. I have a few. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Madrid to beat Ajax is a very good bet at two point two five. Uh, mm. As the bookies pointed out, they'll probably be playing their reserve squad, but that just means that Kaka gets a game. So <laughs> you know, when you've got that kind of talent, they're on a fourteen game winning yeah. streak, and knowing Mourinho, he will put out his reserve squad, but the mentality which he instills in the team at 2.25 And that's more, actually drifted to 2.4. 2.4, yeah, which is yeah. a great bet. And yeah. the same goes for AC Milan, uh, mm. who are playing Victoria Pleasant, and yeah. that's at 2.3. Yeah. They're away, they don't have much to play for, but uh, as Allegri said this morning, Alexander Pato is probably our newest signing, because he's come yeah. back from injury, he wants to get a few games under his belt. Mm. So I see that one coming in, and if you want to place a double on that, you're getting a value of almost 5.6, which is brilliant. On Real and uh, Milan. Real and Milan, that's, away from home. That's a rarity. Relative yeah, minimums. That's a rarity. So, yeah. Interesting. It's very interesting betting-wise this round. Uh, myself, uh, I will actually go for Porto to beat Zenit at home, 165. <laughs> and then I just have a feeling that Olympiacos will make it against Arsenal uh, at home, uh, 190. And that's a quite nice double, as I see it. Arsenal will put up some very hot youngsters but I think Olympiacos at, Olympiacos at home will be a bit too much for Wenger's young uh, soldiers you probably disagree Oli or what do you say with your Arsenal heart no no I, th- I think you're right Dan um, it's going to be a great experience for for all those young players I mean Chamberlain will play again and he's proving we, you know, every time he goes on the pitch that he is a real prospect um, but no I, I think Olympiacos look Decent at 190. It's just nice for Arsenal that this is the first game of the season that there's no pressure. Exactly. You know, it exactly. gives everyone a little yeah. break. And it's a fantastic trick for the for the youngster to do to go true, through. Will be fire and Bengals at the stadium as always. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a hot atmosphere and it will be something that they can they can exactly. build on. But I think Olympiacos at 190 mm-hmm. is a decent bet. What's um, your bet or bets elsewhere? Obviously. You know, we've touched on Madrid and Milan, um, but oh, I think Napoli. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Dan. Yeah, I just can't see Villarreal no. getting anything there. And at one one seventy five, I will say bad. It's actually one seventy now. One seventy now. Yeah. It's gone. But I just 
with with the yeah. with their concentration yeah. solely on you know they the, the, seem to be just sorry to break it but they seem to be more focused as you say on Champions League oh, than are. on Syria. I mean Absolutely. that's their big thing now. The, I think that's the thing because they're such a big uh, they're a team which just plays for the big games. Mm. They scored seven in their last two games. They scored three against Juventus. Very unlucky to draw that game. They went up three one. It could have been even more. Mm. And their players are suddenly firing and it. They've got the cup mentality. Yeah. That, that's exactly what they've got. Very inside Napoli, for sure. With yeah. Lavezzi, etc. I mean, if if it goes as I think it will, and Napoli finish second in the group, and you know United, you don't want to draw. You know, no. Obviously, United finish no. second. Sorry, but you know, if, if for Arsenal, it's a dangerous it, tie. Yeah, you know, it is. It's a dangerous yeah. draw. Dominic, you have a great weekend behind you, don't you, as a tipster? Oh, uh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> oh, all my three tips came us. in, which yeah. is very nice. So exactly. Stoke at 4.75, That's an I think, amazing was the pick, bet. which I was very pleased about. So, <laughs> oh, thank very you. good. So, hopefully, hopefully we can keep the form going. And it's a big price, I've, I've found, but I think Marseille at Borussia Dortmund. Mm. Marseille won the, uh, the fixture... That the first fixture three um, nil. Obviously, that was in Marseille, but Dortmund have struggled to come to terms with uh, Champions League football. They are they are improving, but I can't see any reason why they were short as one point six five. So, therefore, I, I think you've got to take the five point two five on Marseille. Mm, um, I also think there'll be a lot of goals in this fixture because depending what happens in the Olympiacos Arsenal fixture, you'll imagine that both teams will need the winner to, uh, in this game so I can see both teams being gung-ho going all out trying to secure the win and uh, that could leave gaps at the back for both teams so I think a high scoring win for Marseille That's good What, what do you make of the city Bayern game Dan? I know obviously City need a win but do you see Bayern coming with a, a weak side? Uh, I think they will uh... Uh, not have a super weak uh, side there because I think they want to defend some uh, ranking points as well which is quite important for them in Europe and um, I think also that they feel that they want to show Europe what they are made of and uh, they can play quite relaxed so I don't think that this will be <laughs> that easy for City I think City will win so I mean, it, it will not be that easy that's an interesting price for Bayern no, no. five Bayern. times the money for sure because what can happen also is as we said before if Napoli goes up and have 2 nil, 3 nil, mm. the players will know that after a while and what do they think then you know yeah. when they have massive league fixtures coming up well I mean for Mancini as well he's, he's obviously got Two Carling Cup semi finals. Yeah, exactly. Now he's got a third round tie against Manchester yeah. United to look forward yeah. to. So. so it's intriguing, very intriguing. We can just uh, give you some heads up here on our great ambassador's tips. Um, quite interesting from Marcel Desailly. When I saw it first, his double, uh, I thought it was, well, not so easy. But he has actually uh, a way win for Arsenal against Olympiacos uh, on the odds there that they can play relaxed. And they can do something with their pace away at Olympia Casa. Who needs to attack so they will get some yeah. space. Uh, and then a draw in Lille Trapsonspor. And Lille is probably very backed at home to Trapsonspor because it's an important game for both. But a draw is enough for Trapsonspor. And they have done some decent results before. So the draw in Lille Trapsonspor is four times the money. Uh, while Rud Schullit, he actually backs Olympia Cos and Porto. So I agree with him there. Rud Gullit, the great Dutch legend. <laughs> so let's see what happens here in the Tuesday and Wednesday action around Europe. It will be intriguing. Don't miss the bets on BetClick and LiveBet as well. Oliver, do we have something more on the... Um, no, I was just going to do a quick survey around the table. Yeah. Dom, which English clubs will progress? Um, Man United, definitely... I think I was actually quite impressed with Chelsea on Saturday. I think they might just have enough. I think Man United and Chelsea will go through. I think City. I think Napoli will do the business. Perrin. Yeah, I think I would stick with Dominic as well. Uh, it comes to United and Chelsea to go through, and City to probably go out. Mm-hmm. Dan. Joy, joy yeah. for Man City. Or will my despair? Will my uh, sky blue heart? Unfortunately, I need to turn down this. City will not go through. It's they have uh, they missed it at home uh, against uh, 
uh, Napoli. Uh, then I think that United will go through, but I don't think that Chelsea will go through. I think that Valencia will uh, have a score draw so that will send them through uh, in the group. And it's more headaches for AVB and his players. Could make for an interesting Europa League then. Yeah. <laughs> Channel, exactly. Channel 5 will be busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, one last thing. Whatever you guys do, do not touch Inter Milan at all okay. right now. They this are could be possibly the better as toxic as yeah, I would call them I right now. I backed them against Udinese and they lost at no. home. What, what, what's going Unreliable on Unreliable team, team disjointed, what's... the key players yeah. are out. So there, there is no turning around no. point scene that you can no. see. No, they, I, no. They, they, they're always getting a good price. But it's just because they're so bad at the moment. They're very unreliable. Yeah. And the team's not functioning as a unit. They're all over the place in many games. So the defense is... It's mm. aged and, you know, mm. they've kind of kept the same team from two years ago in the hope that they can repeat mm. their success. Yeah. But one needs to realize that those players were playing under Mourinho and yeah. that gives a completely different yeah. mentality to a squad. Yeah, I can tell you about it is I have a good friend in Malta. He's a massive uh, uh, Inter supporter since he was a kid mm -hmm. and he always goes to two uh, games during the spring but he's actually thinking about postponing them now because he thinks they are so lousy so he yeah. doesn't want to see them and that has never happened before. So something is wrong in Inter. Definitely, definitely. Maybe that's a theme for the next uh, episode we can talk about teams in this array possibly what, what's, yeah, definitely. what's going on definitely interesting interesting uh, Ole your view on the English sides then in Champions League um, I think I, I'm not going to go um, I'm just going to sit on the fence like the other guys Chelsea, Man United City yeah. City out you know yeah. I'm, I'm afraid which is disappointing because you know the English sides have had a good run yeah um, but They can concentrate on the league and win it by a record margin <laughs> <laughs> to make up for it. Yeah, They'll we, probably do that see. because looking at Mancini's history as a league coach, he's, he's been absolutely superb, yeah. but he's had a few problems in Europe. So That's true. He's yeah, probably going to have a similar case where he yeah. just decides to concentrate on the league and go for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. looks like that. Well, looking, moving on then, maybe we should look at the FA Cup and just a few of the outright yeah. odds that we've got after yeah. yesterday's draw. Exactly, exactly. The most interesting draw was of course the Manchester Derby, the big one, uh, City against United. I think we have a new, we have a favourite now that is uh, from Stamford Bridge. Yeah, quite surprising really. Chelsea are yeah. uh, six to win the FA Cup and their favourites ahead of Manchester City, seven, Liverpool eight, uh, Manchester United nine, Arsenal nine and Tottenham nine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Dom, does anything stand out there for you? Um, I think you'd probably want to be on the winners of the Manchester tie. You could perhaps even consider dutching them both. And, or I, I'd actually gamble on City going through, I think. Mm. Um, although they've got a lot of other big games around then, I think their depth of squad is probably stronger than Man United. So they could possibly uh, play a stronger B team. Depending, I mean, it's very hard at this time to say what will happen in the week coming up to the game it wouldn't be clearer but I, I would rather be on City than United I think their question marks against all the big teams about how seriously they'll take it I mean I can certainly see Redknapp playing kind of weakened teams in the, in the competition Wenger mm. um, I mean Liverpool would possibly be a team that would play their strongest team but I don't think their strongest team's arguably strong enough to win it mm. um, there could be a few lively outsiders though. I mean normally teams like Stoke last year who, who've just got the league to concentrate on but uh, shouldn't go down so I mean maybe Sunderland at 40s with O'Neill or West Brom at 50s uh, West Brom have started uh, they're an improving side and they can be quite difficult to beat under Hodgson uh, Hodgson team so I think they could they could offer a run at 50s mm. I must say uh, that Sunderland sort of leapt out at me a little bit I know I, I think they I didn't think they played too well yesterday but I think the Martin O'Neill factor we know what he can do and as a motivator I think he could turn the, them around and a run in the FA Cup might be a little bit of uh, something they need just to yeah. take their mind off what's going on yeah spice it up a bit I agree with that I think Stoke is a tempting outside the bet as Don pointed out uh, five I, times no I, I didn't I, Stoke was last year I just think Stoke now they're through in the Europa League I, yeah, I okay. think Teams like Stoke last year who got to the final, I think teams that are kind of stuck in mid-table without too much to play for are the teams to go for. I mean, I would have suggested maybe Everton or Newcastle, but I think Everton are a touch short 18. Newcastle mm -hmm. lost Stephen Taylor this weekend for the season. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how long Colacini's out for, but they're such big misses. But yeah, the, the bigger prices, Sunderland and West Brom, mm -hmm. kind of, I, I think could be worth 
a fantasy. Mm. Okay, but then I go for Stoke anyway. Okay. <laughs> nice draw. Stoke at 35, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? A good cup side, so could be something. I wouldn't touch Aston Villa at 30, though, to be honest. <laughs> no. Not, not, not now. No. Interesting. Uh, South End, 5,000 times the money. Grimsby, 5,000 times the money. Tamworth, 7,500 times the money. And Fleetwood, 3,000 times the money. That's interesting. <laughs> well, Tamworth got a great, great draw. I think they've got Everton, um, which will be a mm. fantastic occasion. Yeah. It's, it's great to see the magic of the FA Cup. The magic of the FA Cup, yeah, exactly. That's for sure. Interesting. Good stuff, guys. Anything to add from tweets? Uh, from not really. We had a, we had a couple of um, group of death tweets. Mm. Um, again, Kenny12 Arsenal, who's a regular... Um, he thinks Holland are going to go out make uh-huh. an early exit uh-huh. um, Germany and Portugal and, and he also thinks Ireland will finish third behind Spain and Italy mm. um, but otherwise no we just want to make a point of saying Thursday we'll be looking ahead to El Clasico yeah. it's going to be a massive massive game and I think as David and Craig pointed out earlier probably one of the biggest El Clasicos in the league for a long long time Yeah. so we'll we'll, we'll have all the best odds for that um, and also we'll be trying to get Thomas Berthold on the line yeah. to talk about the last 16 in the Champions League and also um, Germany's draw mm. let's see what he makes of the group of death exactly Thomas Berthold our German ambassador world champion 1990 and a huge career in Eis Roma actually yeah. plus Parma and also of course in Germany Frankfurt by München Stuttgart among other clubs so he's uh, very interesting to listen to you can see some nice interviews with him and Rud Hullit and Marcel Desai also on CNN.com uh, about uh, Euro 2012. If you log on, log on there and see the interviews that Pedro Pinto have done with them, Thomas Bertold. Just, just lastly, with El Clasico in mind, we want you to send in your uh, scorecast predictions. So we want a first goal scorer and a correct score. Um, and yeah, just keep sending them in and there'll be a, a good prize for the person who gets it right. Interesting. Perfect, guys. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. Thanks, Dominic. Thank you. And thanks, Oli. Thank you. And may the good bets be with you. (laughs) All you are listening. Good luck. And let's hope for a dramatic and nice Champions League round-off. Thank you. (laughs) 